Hey guys, Greg Knuckles here, and today we're talking about rep speed. Specifically, how fast should you be trying to push the bar if you're trying to get as strong as you possibly can? Um, this is something that's been debated for a while. Uh, as far back as 30 years ago, guys like Fred Hatfield were saying every set, every rep, as fast as you possibly can for the best strength gains. Um, people with more of a bodybuilding background have been saying, oh, you should slow down your rep speed because that'll give you more time under tension. More time under tension means bigger muscles. Bigger muscles means stronger muscles. Um, so there's there's been a bit of a, of a dispute there with um, the powerlifting and weightlifting community being more on the side of you should push every rep as fast as possible. And people with more of a bodybuilding background typically saying, no, it's it's okay to slow it down or, or perhaps even better to slow it down a little bit. Uh, so a recent study was published uh, this past May um, called Maximal Intended Velocity Training Induces Greater Gains in Bench Press Performance Than Deliberately Slower Half Velocity Training. Um, and so I'm guessing you can uh, surmise the main results just from the title. So spoiler alert, whatever. Um, but anyway, that's basically what it found. But so kind of some background first. The, uh, the theory behind um, faster training being better is that um, as you produce more force, uh, you have to recruit bigger and stronger muscle fibers. So it's not like your muscle fibers can produce this much, like an individual muscle fiber can produce this much force, but then under a heavier load, it like that individual fiber produces more force. It's that each individual fiber has a certain amount of force it can produce. And so as you need to produce more and more force, you have to produce, or you have to recruit more and more fibers. Um, and there's an order in how they're recruited. Basically the smallest, weakest fibers are recruited first, um, typically slow twitch fibers. And then the larger, um, the larger, stronger, faster twitch fibers uh, are progressively recruited, and then the biggest, largest, strongest are um, recruited at, at the very end. So uh, the thinking being, um, if you have a given weight, uh, force is mass times acceleration. So all other things being equal, if you move it faster, you produce more force, so you're recruiting more of those big, strong muscle fibers, and so that's gonna get you stronger faster. Um, and that sounds great in theory, except for the fact that most research to this point um, didn't really support that, or at least it didn't unambiguously. Um, some studies had found that faster, trainer, faster training was better. Others had found that there really wasn't much of a difference. Um, but there were some methodological problems with the past research. Um, one big thing, the biggest thing probably, is a lot of the previous studies had uh, looked at training to failure. Um, and basically found that there wasn't too much difference uh, that rep speed made when you're pushing each set to failure. Um, but so a big problem with that just right off is regardless of how fast you're trying to push the bar, if you're going to failure, all of your reps at the end are going to be slow anyways. Um, so even though they were trying to control for bar speed, um, or at least like provide a lifting cadence, um, they didn't actually measure bar speed to determine um, whether there was actually, whether that's what was actually making a difference. Um, and really, really the biggest thing you can take away from that research was that um, as long as you're pushing to failure and producing similar levels of fatigue, you're going to gain basically the same amount of size and strength. And that's, that's pretty well supported. Um, so what this study wanted to do is specifically focus on training not to failure. Um, so when you're pushing to failure, you're not uh, you're not necessarily controlling for volume and intensity, but when you're staying farther away from failure, you can. Uh, so that's what they were doing in this study, and um, so they started with like sets of six to eight at sixty percent, which you could probably do for like twelve to fifteen fresh. Uh, and worked up to sets of like three to four at 80%, which you could probably do for about eight reps fresh. Um, so even with the slower lifting cadence, uh, it still wouldn't be to failure. So the volume was the same, the intensity was the same. Uh, the only difference was how fast the people were actually pushing the bar. Um, 
and they actually used something really interesting to assign weights for the day. They, they used bar speed, which previous research had found um, correlated very strongly with your strength for the day. Uh, so just to throw a number at you, um, previous research had found that if you're moving a weight at about 0.79 meters per second, um, that's pretty close to about 60% of your one rep max. And so basically what the researchers would do is during your warm up sets, you would push every rep as fast as possible. And then as soon as you hit the heaviest weight that you could move at 0.79 meters per second, they would be like, okay, this is your 60% weight for the day. And that's a really interesting way of, um, assigning weights for a given day because like let's say let's say you bench like 225 or something and you're doing a 16 week percentage based training program um it's problematic to base things off of an initial percent because hopefully you're getting stronger over those 16 weeks um so by using velocity that's something that you can use to say like hey this is about 80 percent of how strong i am today or like this is 70 percent of how strong i am today not how strong i was 16 weeks ago or whenever i hit my all-time pr anyway uh so what they did is uh let's say 60 percent uh you can push it 0.79 meters per second um so the group that was doing the maximal intended intended velocity training would work up to the heaviest weight they could push at that speed and then every single rep every single rep they would push as hard as they possibly could um and the half velocity group would work up as fast as they could to um, to a weight they could push at 0.79 meters per second. But then they had a screen in front of them that was providing visual and audio feedback um, to help them push it at a rate of 0.4 meters per second to control for bar speed. So bar speed's the only thing different, volume and intensity are the same. So they trained for six weeks and um, kind of the eye-popping thing, and I'll, um, I'll flash graphs up for you, is that across the board, um, the maximal velocity group had essentially twice the gains. So they gained um, about 18% on their bench press versus 10% for the other group. Another thing they looked at is um, speed with different absolute intensities. So um, they looked at how heavy of weights you can move uh, at 0.8 meters per second or slower. Um, so that's about 60% or heavier, like relatively heavy weights. Um, and in the max velocity group, there was about a 36% improvement versus about 17 in the half velocity group. Um, and then for lighter loads, loads that you can move at 0.8 meters per second or faster, there's about 11%, 11.5% improvement versus a 4.5% improvement. Um, so across the board, the max velocity group did better in terms of strength gains. Um, one other interesting thing to point out, going back to the uh, um, velocities at given absolute loads, so both groups had larger improvements in bar speed with relatively heavy loads than they did with relatively light loads. And um, from there, we can see something about training transference. Um, so one of the first things a lot of people will say is like, oh, if, if you're trying to get your vertical leap up, you need to squat more. And that's absolutely true to a point. But after that point, the transference will be less. So you're like let's say you're a double body weight squatter or thereabouts. Um, your body is a relatively light load that if you're gonna be jumping very high at all, you're going to be moving your body much faster than 0.8 meters per second for a vertical leap test. So moving relatively heavy weights really improves your ability to move relatively heavy weights fast, but it doesn't really say that much or it doesn't do quite as much for moving relatively light things fast, like say your body or like if you're a shot putter, a 16 pound ball. Okay, so guys, those are really the high points. Um, I did a slightly more extensive write up from my blog. You can find the link in the description as well as the link to the study I'm referencing. Um, in addition, if this is a topic that interests you, I'm going to link um, Mladen Jovanovic's blog um, he's, he's someone who's much more of an expert on this topic 
than I am, and he, he has a lot to say about it. So if this is something that interests you and you want to use speed-based training to regulate um, to regulate your lifting for a given day or for a training cycle, uh, I would highly recommend you check out his stuff. Anyway, so guys, that's all I have to say. Uh, signing out. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my blog and all that cool stuff. Um, anyway, thanks.